aus wie... No scope! <laughs> nice! And let me just start this video by telling you that the implementation of FSR 3.1 in God of War Ragnarok is the best one so far. Even better than Ghost of Tsushima. But well, you'll see soon. But before that, if you want to support the channel, watch the sponsor. GVG More! Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Hello guys, I should game plays. I'm Fabio Pisco and I'm back once again. I still don't have Fiverr internet if you don't know what happened. Well, there were lots of big fires here uh, in Portugal and I am in a village where the fires just went through and kind of burned every fiber optic cable and so on. So we don't, we still don't have internet and that's why it took so long to test God of War and FSR 3.1 implementation in God of War. Ragnarok. Just for you to understand, I kind of grabbed my laptop, traveled 12 kilometers to go to a, <laughs> to a village where they have internet and then I downloaded God of War, I brought it on my laptop, copied from my laptop to my main computer, then uh, verify the files on Steam and now I'm testing it for you guys. In terms of quality, I'm running 1440p of course and um, the GPU is of course locked to 120 so the usage and uh, the power draw is not that much but in terms of temporal anti-aliasing it is working pretty well and I mean it looks really 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 good the game I just run I just ran the intro and it looks very very nice in terms of general quality lighting and so on we do have some issues like this this little fog uh, that in my opinion shouldn't look like this of course but yeah TAA just for you to see 1440p ultra wide TAA native temporal anti-aliasing. Now, as you see, everything's working fine. And now that we have some fog, some particles where, and that's where FSR usually, well, doesn't work that great. Let's try FSR now. Firstly, with native mode, FSR 3.1 native. And so far, so good. The fog is working well. The water is working decently well because the water is actually one of the points where FSR tends to work, yeah, like crap usually. The particles, the translucent particles, the water quality isn't that great. We have a bit of pixelation, but nothing that's that's really worrying. Now, as soon as we go to the quality mode, which means that we go to 66% or 67% of the render resolution, at um, or in this case, the native resolution, uh, and one thing that I like with God of War is that it actually shows you. So it's 950p. <laughs> We're running 950p, upscaled to 1440p. And now as we look at the water, we can see more pixelation. Once again, it is not bad. If you just don't look at the water, the overall quality is actually pretty good. The fog works well. The shadows work decently well too. And it is only the water that isn't working as it should entirely. We do have a little shimmering on the beard, but that's a thing that also happens with TAA. Anything besides that works pretty well, considering it is 950p or 960p upscaled to 1440p ultra wide. This is FSR 3.1 that still has issues, of course, but is much better in terms of upscaling compared to 2.1, especially uh, when it's well implemented, like we see in this game, at least it seems so far, um, and Ghost of Tsushima that have have very very good implementations now let's try the frame generation and this is where things get mad because if I turn on frame generation which is now decoupled from the upscaler we can actually go over one 120 FPS which doesn't really make sense so now it, it doesn't go over one 120 I tried it before and it went to like 190 and it, it isn't going now this shouldn't be happening and it was locked because I was being an idiot because I have RTSS locked to 120 FPS so it wouldn't go over 120 FPS and yeah I was really dumb and I did not check that when I recorded that I was kind of tired so yeah that happened sorry about that that was me being dumb not an issue of the game. As soon as I deleted the, um, the lock, everything went fine.
In terms of quality, once again, we saw that the quality mode works pretty decent. If we go to native, we have way more fine detail. For, for example, if you look at the rocks here, you can see immediately that we do have way more fine detail. As soon as we go to quality, we lose a bit of, the, uh, of that fine detail and things get a bit more smudged, but still overall looks pretty well. Pretty well because FSR 3.1, uh, in terms of upscaling quality in native, already looks a bit more sharpened than the, um, than the native TAA. Yeah, as you see, the temporal anti-aliasing is still, uh, is, is also a bit smudged um, here and there. But yeah, of course, that we have more pixels, so native will always have better quality. Now, looking at the rocks, yeah, I don't really want to, to go there. But yeah, looking at the rocks, yeah fine detail as soon as we go to let's say FSR 3 native even more detail more sharpened as soon as we go to the quality mode we do lose a bit of detail not that much but we do lose it let's see what we get with XCSS if we go to XCSS not native ultra quality which is the previous quality yeah, it's basically the same. The quality isn't retained. Maybe they need to scale the, the textures with um, with the upscaling as well. Maybe that's not happening. And as we go to quality mode, the LSS, yeah, the LSS does retain more, uh, a bit more fine detail here. It seems that it retains a bit more, but nothing really relevant. And in terms of general quality, yeah, they all look great. Sincerely, honestly, they all look great. Temporal, if you can run it at native, run it because it is the best quality that you can get. But if you're running the LSS quality, XCSS or FSR, they all look great in terms of fine detail. Now we're testing with the 7800 XT. Uh, and we're running temporal anti-aliasing. The game runs at 1440p native ultra settings, so maximum settings at around 80 FPS, which is not that bad, uh, taking in consideration that I don't even have the 7800 XT overclocked. If I had my tweaked settings, it would be even better. And it's running once again 80 something FPS as soon as we go. We enable FSR frame generation to native 80 something and we get even less because the native FSR um, well usually gives us less performance uh, but generally slightly better quality in some scenarios compared to native TAA but of course depends on the native TAA implementation in this case FSR 3 native if we if you can run FSR 3.1 native, it looks really, really good. And in some scenarios, it kind of keeps more fine detail. If you look at the stones, for example, you can see that the fine detail gets lost. But for, from what I tested so far, I didn't actually notice the, the ghosting issues that we had uh, with games like Forbidden West. It seems to be much better than Forbidden West, maybe on par or even slightly better implementation than uh, the one we have with Ghost of Tsushima. So if that's the case, if that keeps being the case, God of War might be the best implementation of FSR 3.1 that we have so far. I don't see any, any this occlusion, which is what we call ghosting. It seems much better in that regard than Horizon Forbidden West. Hmm, interesting. It is completely playable. We are upscaling from 960p to 1440p ultra wide, and uh, the image quality, the image fidelity is perfectly acceptable, and we get around 120 FPS instead of the of the 80 something that we were having or 70 something with FSR 3.1 native. So far, one of the best implementations, if not the best implementation I've seen, even in terms of movement. There is, n there is nothing really noticeable that I can see, even when looking at the character model. Maybe if I slow down to, let's say, 0.3 times, but still, uh, it wouldn't make sense. In real gameplay, I see no problems with this occlusion, even with quality settings and at 1440p ultra-wide. So, that's great. Now, as for upscaling, XCSS native, we get 80 FPS here. And the image quality looks pretty fine, pretty fine. Let's see how many we get with FSR. 92, and with XCSS we have 85, yeah. We do have a difference. In terms of fine detail, 
XESS is once again a bit more smudged and it would be an option to let's say use the ultra quality which is the previous quality mode but as soon as we look at some uh, at some sticks let's say that look at those ones in the ground uh, yeah we do have a bit of shimmer and if we look there close to the light we do have a bit of shimmer as well so it seems that in some scenarios it is fine, in others not really. Let's see what we have there. And yeah, in this regard, FSR is way more stable. We do have a bit of... Yeah, we do have a bit of ghosting here in the in the snow particles. It is there, but in terms of shimmering, it is it, it has actually less shimmer than XESS at the same render quality, at the same render resolution here, so 960p. You really have to look into it to really notice a bit of it, and it's really not that much actually. It's more there on the light, and it it, it works much better with some types of foliage. So definitely, FSR 3.1 works really really well here really well in terms of fsr 3.1 implementations i would say ghost of tsushima and god of war really close with god of war being the first one ghost of tsushima the second one um and overall i would say that horizon forbidden west is better than ratchet and clank in terms of upscaling overall but it also has a bit more this occlusion than ratchet and clank so it's a tie and by the way i was messing around here uh, and we're running now temporal temporal native, basically native resolution, 1440p ultra wide. Frame generation does work now somehow, but anyway, so 77 FPS as soon as we enable frame generation, we go to 120 locked. We do have more latency because it is locking to 120 and I don't really know why, but it is working. And we went to 120 FPS, even with the 7800 XT and of course, um, Okay, heavy attack. But what I meant is that it is working fine here. Frame generation, at least in the parts I tested so far. Frame generation, the upscaling, still locked to 120 somehow. But overall, yeah, pretty good quality, pretty playable. The latency is not that much. Let's now test the 6700 XT to see how it plays here. And we're getting around 60 FPS, 50 something here in these really, oh, in these really tougher parts. It's going well, okay, the combos are the same as the first God of War, which is fine. So 66, sometimes dropping below 60, as soon as we go to FSR 3.1 native, it gets even worse, obviously, around 10 FPS less, which is actually a lot, drops down to 50. Let me see if we can block it, yep. But we can use it to quality mode to get some more juice out of the 6700 XT. So quality mode, and we go up to 70 FPS, which is considerably more than we had before. In some states we went down 60, and now we have at least 67 in the minimums. But the game's still heavy, but once again, this is ultra settings, we don't really need to run ultra settings. You can go custom and select textures to maximum, and everything set to high and I believe the FPS will be considerably higher. And we immediately go to around 90, which is a huge boost from the 70 something that we had in most scenarios. And even in this part, which is heavy or heavier than it was before, we are still going 80 something FPS, which is pretty nice. 77, 78, pretty nice actually. Pretty nice with FSR 3.1 quality. Now, if this is not enough for you, you can still use the frame generation and you go to the settings, graphic options, and you go to frame generation. And once again, it is now decoupled. The frame generation with FSR 3.1 doesn't care if you're using XCSS, if you are using FSR, if you're using native quality, you can just use it. You just go to frame gen, activate AMD FSR FG, and you go up to 120. 120 with frame generation feels very nice. We were having around 80, I believe. So we got around 40 FPS more. And at the same time, yeah, quality feels nice. Smoothness feels nice. And the latency is actually pretty low. If you don't like FSR 3.1, you can just select XESS, go to ultra quality, no biggie, and still use for FSR frame generation. And we are now currently using XSS 1.3 plus FSR 3 frame generation, and it is running pretty decently as well. Oh, this is a new one, very nice. Woo, 
<laughs> this is nice. Bam, bam. XCSS with frame generation works well too, although I don't really like the smudge effect or some of the, of the shimmering that we have. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, and here in the particles of the X, we do have some, some pixelation, like we did with God of War, the first one. It's exactly the same. We do have a bit of pixelation here, but as soon as we go to... XESS. <laughs> we do have lots of shimmer. Look at the shimmer that we have there with XESS. That's insane. But yeah, the particles are fine. FSR, FSR 3.1 quality, fine as well. Basically, no shimmer. But with XESS, we do have a lot of shimmer. So, once again, yeah. So even with a 6700 XT, high settings, 1440p, as long as you use frame generation and FSR 3.1 quality, you can run this game at 120 FPS. And this is the beauty, the beauty of this technology. You need to understand that this card has like four years and with FSR 3.1, with frame generation and so on, we can get over 120 FPS in this game, in a game that just released now, of course it is a remaster for PlayStation, from PlayStation to PC, but still the game looks gorgeous and we can still run it at over 120 FPS on a card as old as the 6700 XT that was a mid-tier card when it came out, like four years ago in 2020. This is the best FSR 3.1 implementation that we have, period. God of War Ragnarok, Ghost of Tsushima, and then we have Horizon Forbidden West tied with Ratchet and, uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Both are kind of okay-ish, but Ghost of Tsushima and God of War Ragnarok have very, very good implementations. They do have some small, very small downsides compared to the upsides. You get way more FPS, way higher smoothness, and the kind of the only downside that we have is a little bit of ghosting, just a little bit of ghosting in some scenarios, especially uh, with snow and so on, but apart from that, it works very well, so I'm impressed. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. And once again, you know I'm back. I'll be trying to pump to pump out more content uh, in between moving my things to my new house and, of course, setting up the studio and doing everything at the same time, waiting for the Fiverr internet to come back. Leave your comment in the comment section and let me know if you, if you really enjoy the FSR implementation, if you really think that this FSR implementation is better or worse than the, the one in Ghost of Tsushima. Just let me know because I really want to know. See you in the next video, guys.